Raymond Cross. I am an associate professor of medicine at the University of Maryland uh, School of Medicine. I'm director of the Inflammatory Bowel Disease Program there. <clears throat> Tell me some of the uh, newer concepts uh, in the management of osteoarthritis with the newer agents. So I think what, with ulcerative colitis, uh, it, it's still, uh, we, we have more, we have emerging medical therapies that we haven't had before, but the concepts of management are still very similar to what they were 10 or 20 years ago. We still have a very safe group of medications called amino salicylates, which work in the vast majority of patients. But in those patients who have more moderate to severe disease, uh, prior to undergoing surgery, we, often, we have uh, immune suppressants, uh, which work fairly well, and we now have biologic therapy, uh, specifically anti-TNFs like Remicade, uh, which can be very effective in patients and can save, save colons uh, and, and allow patients to avoid surgery. Uh, we also, it looks like we're on the verge of having a subcutaneous or injectable uh, anti-TNF agent called Humira that looks like it's going to be approved for ulcerative colitis, which will be convenient for patients who are starting a drug like that that they won't have to come in and get intravenous infusions. One of the things we worry about in treating patients is these drugs, the immune suppressants and the biologics can have side effects. Um, we worry about serious infections, unusual infections. We worry about certain types of cancers like lymphomas, uh, which can happen in, in ranging from probably one in seven or eight hundred treated patients to one in a couple thousand. So we're very cautious with using these drugs, and especially when we use drugs in combination, uh, using an immune suppressant and biologic together. Uh, but there is a, another recent study that came out showing that if you use a combination of an immune suppressant and a biologic or anti-TNF in patients with ulcerative colitis, that the outcomes, at least as far as mucosal healing, uh, are better. Um, so it'll be, and even the clinical outcomes are improved. So. We're grappling with the decision of, you know, which patients need both drugs. Um, uh, what, so how, how do you sort that out? And right now, we don't have clinical markers available to uh, help prognosticate who needs two drugs versus who can get one and sort of continue to step up the pyramid. So it'll be important that we develop biomarkers that are going to help restratify people a little better because I think most gastroenterologists are unwilling unwilling is the wrong word, but we're hesitant to give everyone the maximal therapy. Also, other concepts that are changing is that how we follow patients and decide if medicine's working. So, you know, 10 or 20 years ago, the standard was you come into the office after we start drug X, and we ask, how are you doing? Well, I'm doing fine. My bowel movements are back to normal. I'm not seeing blood. And we, you know, write your prescription, you leave the office. And that's, for the most part, still what's done today. We do incorporate blood testing, and we want to make sure a patient's blood work is normalized, and that's sort of become incorporated in most practices. And some academic practices will actually have activity indices that are validated and quality of life scores that we'll have them do. But it's still uh, pretty, um, it's still uh, information gathering. It's not actual invasive testing for the most part. So there is a movement afoot that we're going to, our goal is to heal the entire lining of the colon, so-called mucosal healing, and some have termed the fact that if your blood work and your clinical symptoms are gone and your lining of the intestine is healed, that's what's called deep remission or very deep remission. And what is clear from multiple studies now is if you achieve that endpoint, patients do very, very well. Their chances of having a flare and needing to go back on steroids is much, much lower. Um, so the questions that are coming up now is if a patient feels well, what do you do? Do you bring them in for another sigmoidoscopy or colonoscopy and look? And if everything isn't healed, what do you do in that patient? Do you start them on a new drug? Do you add on? Do you try to maximize what they're on? The reality is that 30 or 40 percent of people don't heal, and so we don't have agents to give them that can result in healing. Um, so right now, the, it's the gold standard is not to repeat repeat scoping in patients who are, who have done who are doing well, but I think if you're scoping people for other indications, perhaps screening for colon cancer, and you see that they still have disease, in my personal practice, I do tweak their medicines and try to make some changes to try to get them to get complete healing.